Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today... I'm going to be showing you a new Tabu Lele, which is going to be coming out in the upcoming Fairy Rise expansion in Japan. And for a long time, I couldn't decide who my favorite Alolan Guardian was. For those interested, I did eventually come down on Tapu Bulu. I think Tapu Bulu is the best of the Alolan Guardians. Whoever designs Pokemon cards is not having the same dilemma that I'm having. They are in love with Tapu Lele. Of course, you've got Tapu Lele GX, the most ridiculous of all the GXs. Then you've got the non-GX Tapu Lele with the ridiculous attack, letting you move damage counters all around, which was printed in both Fairy and Psychic flavors. We've now got another non-GX Tapu Lele, and it is once again really, really good. I don't know exactly who the people are that are designing cards, though there was a brilliant article about it on GameSpot. If I remember, I'll link it in the description. If I forget, somebody pop it down in the comments, please. But I tell you what, whoever those individuals are, they love Tapu Lele. Now, it has, of course, been translated by the lovely David Hockman over at LimitlessTCG.com slash translations. And to start off, 110 HP is kind of low, but then again, it's a basic Pokemon. It's right up there with stuff like Tapu Coco, so we shouldn't be terribly upset. And I actually come to think about it, it's the same as the other non-GX Tapu Lele. The awesome thing is that being a fairy Pokemon, it has a resistance to darkness, which means that Zoroark GX won't be getting a one-hit KO. They can do a max 120, resistance kicks in and drops it down to 100. Oh, look, you're still there with 10 HP remaining. The weakness to metal is kind of a pain because Dusk Main Necrozma, with its general attack for free energy, will do 60. With weakness, will go up to 120, which does kind of suck, unfortunately. And a retreat cost of 1 is quite nice because, firstly, it's just generally low. But after rotation, we have got a skateboard that we will be able to use for free retreat. So that's quite nice. And of course, being a fairy Pokemon does mean you're hitting weakness against stuff like Rayquaza and Ultra Necrozma. So you know what? Could be quite a lot worse. But it is the ability here, to be perfectly honest with you, that is making my heart sore. Or at least would if Tapu Lele was my favorite Tapu. Where's the Bulu love? Once during your turn, when you attach a tool with fairy charm and its name from your hand to this Pokemon, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon confused. First thing, quick reminder about confusion. You, if your opponent tries to attack, they flip a coin. If heads, the attack goes through. If tails, they take 30 damage and the attack doesn't work. And of course, confusion will stay around until they get themselves out of the active. And then we need a quick revision on these Fairy Charm cards. Now, obviously, I did a video about these the other day. I do a video about everything, to be perfectly honest. I like to be a bit of a completionist. And I'll pop a link to that in the description. And they are very nice tools. And essentially, when you attach them to a Fairy Pokemon, you get immunity from that type of Pokemon. So we've got three flavors of Fairy Charm. We've got Fighting, Dragon, and Psychic. And if you attach a Dragon Fairy Charm to a Fairy Pokemon, that Pokemon cannot be damaged by Dragon Pokemon. You attach a Fighting Fairy Charm to a Fairy Pokemon, and you don't take damage from Fighting Pokemon, and the Psychic one means you don't take damage from Psychic Pokemon, giving you, of course, potential immunity to really good Pokemon like Buzzword, and Lycanroc if you're using the fighting one, Necrozma if you are using the psychic one, and Rayquaza and Ultra Necrozma if you're using the dragon one. Although, of course, you are hitting weakness on dragon Pokemon as a fairy Pokemon, so there is an argument that you don't need the dragon charm, but I'll leave that one up to you. As far as I'm concerned, being able to take a two-hit KO while having immunity the whole time may well be better than taking a one-hit KO and then letting your opponent KO you straight back. And I said these charms were pretty good, and I said for fairy Pokemon, you need to consider them. I said that the investment was quite high, in terms of you're giving up the opportunity to play Choice Band, etc. And you've got to essentially put a whole bunch of them into your deck and then find the right one at the right time. Although the recently revealed Adventure Bag, yes, I've done a video about it, yes, I'll link it in the description, does help us a little bit here. 
because it lets you search for any two Pokemon tools, meaning you can get the right fairy charm at the right time. So these are good tools. But you attach one of them to Tapu Lele, and all of a sudden, instant confusion. Special conditions as abilities are great. We saw that the Raichu from Burning Shadow saw a lot of play because you had the instant paralysis. Now, admittedly, that's paralysis which stops them attacking or retreating. You can, unfortunately, retreat out of confusion. Fun fact, if you go back far enough in the Pokemon trading card game, you used to actually have to flip a coin in order to retreat. At that point, confusion was way better than it is nowadays. But unfortunately... Yeah, little bit annoying. You don't have that anymore. I suppose it's good if you are confused, but it's bad if you're the one doing the confusing. But what you do with a confusion here is you put your opponent in an awkward position. You confuse your opponent's active, and either they've got to flip a coin and Tails is devastating. It's not so much to taking free damage counters, it's losing a turn of attacking. Or they have to retreat out of it but maybe then they don't have anything else they can do. They're going to be able to use something like a Guzma, but firstly, if they play Guzma, that means they don't actually get to attack the active, which might be the one they want to, because they've got to pull something off the bench. And a lot of the time, you're going to switch out and then want to retreat back into your main attacker, but with Floatstone leaving the format, that's not going to be the easiest thing to do. And let's not forget the new Rabombi we looked at the other day. Yes, link in the description. You know how this works by now. Although I do sometimes forget. If I do forget, I'm sorry, I'll put them up in a minute. And Rabombi says that you cannot, your fairy Pokemon, be affected by supporter cards. So if you're playing a fairy deck and you've got a Rabombi on the bench, your opponent cannot Guzma any fairy Pokemon. To put it another way, you confuse your opponent's active with a Rabombi on the bench. They've lost Floatstone, so retreating is much more difficult. They can't use Guzma, so switching in that respect is much more difficult. They will potentially have Tate and Liza, which is either a switch or a Shauna. But do you really want to use your supporter for the turn as a switch? We're moving into an interesting format where confusion could actually be way more fun because Floatstone gone away, Guzma, and it's only really for fairy decks because most people are playing Guzma, that gives a lot of switching. But this could actually stick and be fun. And this is kind of a sit on the bench, confuse your opponent kind of thing. You don't have to use this Tapu Lele to attack. You can just leave it on the bench, attach a fairy charm, and off you go. As a side note, please do remember that Field Blower can discard tools from your own Pokemon. So you could, in theory here, have two Tapu Lele on the bench, Attach a tool to one, confusion. Turn or two later, attach a tool, confusion. And then field blower and potentially get two or three turns of confusion from each Tapu Lele. It's kind of fun. Now, as for the attack, it's, it's actually not too bad. Now, it's a very double colorless, which is a little bit expensive, but it does 70 damage. Now, 70 damage in and of itself is not brilliantly exciting. But the one thing I will say about it is... You had a choice band, you do 100, Rayquaza, he gone, Ultra Necrozma, he gone. So actually, there is a little bit of potential here in terms of using this as an attack. Now, I'm still not 100 you know, percent on this attack being amazing. It's a fairly bog standard attack. Honestly, if you're attaching free fairy energy, how about the new Gardevoir? Heck, how about God of War GX? How about Xerneas Prism Star? Although, to be clear, Xerneas Prism Star can't use double colorless energy, whereas this can. Essentially, ladies and gentlemen, it's a good card. The ability is great, and the attack is all right. There's quite a lot of investment here, certainly if you go the Rabombi route, because you've got to have the Tapu Lele, and then you've got to have a bunch of different fairy charms. But here's the thing, right? If you're not against a fighting deck, you attach the Fairy Charm fighting to Tapu Lele, get some confusion. If you are against a fighting deck, attach it to your active Fairy Pokemon and get immunity from fighting Pokemon. I don't know if the investment for this is going to be worth it. There is certainly an argument here that having to play all the Fairy Charms and the Tapu Lele taking up the space in your deck, having to pop the Tapu Lele on your bench. There is an argument that this is too much. 
But there's another argument that confusion is fun, floatstone rotating helps, and turning off Guzman with Rabombi means this is much more likely to stick and turn into a really annoying card. I'm going to be giving Tapu Lele between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. Not the greatest card that ever lived. But certainly an interesting card that I could see played in a whole bunch of decks. But I want to know what you think about this, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but remember the rule. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.